The cinematic battle of the century has finally arrived for our generation. But is it any good? It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. King Kong first arrived to cinemas back in 1933, and it was one of the first early examples of the giant monster movie. And to this day, of course, is very popular among many generations to come, and is constantly shown on Turner Classic Movies, and it inspired a series of movies such as The Song of King Kong, King Kong Escapes, the Godzilla vs. King Kong version from 1962, as well as a host of other different movies and remakes to come throughout the various years. And of course, the influence on King Kong actually was, of course, done onto like the Godzilla creators. According to interviews such as like A.G. Superaya, the director of special effects for Toho Studios, he basically stated that King Kong inspired him to make Godzilla, that originally Godzilla was going to be a giant octopus, but of course, as we know, know today, basically Godzilla is the opposite of an octopus. Then, of course, in 1954, Godzilla arrived as, of course, an answer to the nuclear explosion and stuff that was going on in Japan. And, of course, had like a series of many different movies throughout the years. Now, the first cinematic battle for King Kong vs. Godzilla started, of course, in 1962. Now, the original idea for this whole entire idea for this battle was that King Kong was to fight Frankenstein. Now, the main reason why that was that idea was because Willis O'Brien, the guy who actually did the special effects for King Kong, wanted that idea to be happening. Of course, he sold the rights to the idea to American producers. They negotiated with Toho Studios and Universal. And that's how the first ever cinematic universe for Godzilla and King Kong first came together. Now, it's been like over like 50 plus years since we've seen the two fight it out. And so naturally, of course, expectations are really, really high for this movie. However, is it good? Is it fun? Is it entertaining? Well, personally, I would say yes. Godzilla vs. King Kong more or less pick up after the events of Godzilla King of the Monsters. And of course, when King Kong arrived in this film, he is much more older in comparison to Kong Skull Island. And so Kong Skull Island, as well as the Godzilla 2014 film, and King of the Monsters all form this sort of universe that they dubbed the Monsterverse. And so that means there's like four movies in this whole entire quadrilogy, as you could say. And basically, you don't really see much humans interaction in this whole entire movie, if not at all. As a matter of fact, the most important thing about this whole entire movie is pretty much the spectacle. If you're coming to watch this movie expecting any more than, of course, like caring about the human characters, the humans in this movie are pretty much disposable. However, if you're coming to this movie expecting non-stop action between King Kong and Godzilla, this movie, my friend, is the movie for you. It's just action, non non-stop. And of course, I personally don't mind. Like most people, you know, they try to criticize like these sort of monster movies for, you know, having too much like action and less humans. Personally, when I see like a kaiju movie, my personal expectations it's to see nothing but the monster fights. And so to me, when I keep seeing like Godzilla and King Kong just duking it all out, that, my friends, is fantastic. Now, the original 1962 film rely heavily on practical effects. And normally I would say I love practical effects, especially for the man in the suit, because I think it's like a dying art, even right now in Japan, because I think that practical effects look really amazing in motion. However, the only thing I did not like about the 1962 film is basically how King Kong to me looked like an orangutan. Now, in this one, they rely heavily on CGI for the special effects, and pretty much the whole entire battle is, of course, Godzilla and Kong being CGI. And I have to say, they look really good in motion. The CGI is just phenomenal. 
Not only is the CGI to me is phenomenon, but another aspect that I really like about this movie is the cinematography. Now the cinematography is fantastic. You have like a lot of blues, a lot of different colors that reflect sci-fi. The whole entire fight in Hong Kong with the blues and everything looks absolutely stunning to look at. And so you will not be disappointed by the cinematography and you will not be disappointed by how the monsters look in this one. Overall, for pure entertainment value, I would give this movie a 4 out of 5. So what do you guys think about this movie? Tell me in the comment section down below. And also, be sure to check out the spoiler review video of this. Because there are some juicy spoilers that I would like to talk about in that video. But this video is not with the spoilers. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.